What's going on, beautiful people? I have my lovely assistant, KK, sitting here with me. And today, we're going to talk about some Appalachian words that I grew up hearing in the coal fields of eastern Kentucky. Some of these words are really common all through the south. Some of them are real common all through eastern Kentucky. And some of them are really localized to the point where my wife, who grew up about 30 or 40 miles from me, had never heard any of it, and her family was pretty country, just like mine, in eastern Kentucky. So without further ado, let's talk about some words I grew up hearing. Right, KK? Yeah? First one I'm going to go with is gallus. What's a gallus? These overalls aren't just for dramatic effect, to show what a big hillbilly I am, because I don't really wear my bibs that often, but they're a visual aid. A gallus is one strap on your overalls or suspenders. So mom and dad might have said to me, fix that gallus, it's twisted. Or pull them galluses up before you get in that church house. Because I wore suspenders when I was little to church sometimes. And you had to be presentable with your church clothes on. How about the word punin? Hmm. Punin means that you're not moving as fast as you normally do. Yeah, you probably are sick or somebody looks sick or they're not working as quickly as they normally do because they don't feel well, that's punin. So you might hear somebody say, yeah, he was out there in the garden punin around today, which meant he wasn't working at his normal speed and you could just tell he didn't feel good. And that is a form of the word puny. And people would use the word puny just to mean small, like standard English speakers. But most of the time, puny was used to indicate sickness or illness. So Granny would say to me, you look kind of puny. You feeling all right? That meant that I was pale and she thought I might be sick. So punin and puny. p -jib. I don't know to this day what a p -jib is, but it was something that people used to compare to something else that they thought was small. So if there was a, a little baby that didn't look like it was big enough to be walking around and it was running around, you know, it kind of amazing looking dad would say, well, that young ain't big as a pea jib. And that meant the kid was really small. So I don't know what a pea jib is. If anybody knows what that is or the origins of it, enlighten me in the comments because I'm really interested to know what a pea jib is. Jaster. My granny used the word jaster and my mom's family. And a jaster was somebody that was kind of shady or unwanted or she thought they were kind of sleazy. Uh, she might say something if there was a guy sitting on a bench just kind of looking around all shifty eyed, you know, she would say, look at that jaster over there. Don't go about him. Something like that. Um, I'm not sure if that is a form of the word shyster or in North Carolina, somebody that is uh, unknown or maybe, you know, uh, people don't really know what to think about them. They call them a Jasper. So I don't know if, if that's where Granny got Jaster or not. KK, are you a Jaster? No, you're not a Jaster. We just love KK around here. How about Warsh? It basically is the same as wash. But if you're not really prepared to hear it said that way, you might be real confused. So I had a great aunt that would say, yeah, I washed it and got all the stains out of it, or my washing machine's leaking. Whenever they say washing machine, it might be a little bit easier to infer. But the times that they would say it without saying machine and you didn't know no better, well, there you go. Pertinier it, or pertinier. That means close. And most of the time, my family used it to mean close to a time or close to a date that's coming up. So December 23rd, I might say, Mom, is it close to Christmas? And she'd say, near it. And I knew that meant it's getting close. Or, you know, you would hear the form near sometimes without it. But they both meant the same thing. So I might say, Grandpa, is it noon yet? He'd say, Pert near. And I knew that it was getting close to noon. There was never any specific amount of time that it stood for. You just knew that it was close to whatever purpose you were 
worried about. This one was mom's family when they got excited about somebody. They thought somebody was lying and they were they were exclaiming that the person was lying. You don't donert. That meant that you're lying about it or he don't donert. So granny might have said something like, Bob down the road there said he had $100,000 in a mason jar and somebody would go, ah, he don't donert. Or if I came in and I said, yeah, my cousin said he had straight A's, and Mom knew that he wasn't a very good student. She'd say, ah, he don't donert. So there you go. Don't donert, whatever that means. I don't know. And this one's one of my favorites. Fard. What's a fard? It's not a car or a brand of car. It's your forehead. And the way that Dad used it the most was wipe your fard if you had sweat dripping all over you or whatever. He just reminds you to go ahead and wipe your fard. Or one of the greatest hillbilly Appalachian phrases that you would ever hear in your life was one time a horsefly had bit him on the head and he come running and he said, well, that old horsefly lit right on my fard and bit the fart out of me. That's about as country as they come right there. Brogan. A brogan is a plain brown shoe or an old work boot similar to a clod hopper right just some big clubby clobby looking shoe or or boot the dad might say something like get your brogans on let's go stack that wood and that meant your old shoes you didn't care to mess up or if he was kind of picking at you because you was moving too slow he'd say get your brogans on i'm hungry they're going to run out if we was going out to some restaurant even if i was putting on a pair of clean ball shoes he would call them brogans now, I do know a guy from Scotland, and he says that they call shoes sometimes brogues. So, I'm almost positive that's where that came from. And the last one I'll end with is pretty common throughout all of Eastern Kentucky. One of my favorites is the word kyarn. And kyarn means nasty. It smells like kyarn. He, he goes looking like kyarn. meant that he wasn't cleaned up too good. He was nasty. And it's actually a form of the word carrion for rotted meat. I didn't know that till I was a junior in high school when Sharon Mosley kind of told me what it was when I wanted to put it in a story I was having to write or something. But yeah, it's right, Kearney. It means that it's real nasty. And that's one of my favorites. If you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. If you know anything about these words or if you grew up here in variations or something different, please let me know and Katie would be real excited to have some people uh, give her some love as well. Um, I'll probably not make another Appalachian word video. I, I usually do technology kind of stuff, but I thought this would be kind of fun to throw my hat in the ring because the, the Tennessee people, the North Carolina people, the Georgia people, they all seem to have a lot of videos with their words and some of their words I don't know, some of them I do. But I thought I would throw in a little Eastern Kentucky flavor. So from Katie and me and the Appalachian foothills of Eastern Kentucky, I hope everybody has a good evening. Yeah, you like that, don't you? Yeah, she's a good girl.